Hey! It's using the right window again! Okay. So, the party of intrepid heroes have leveled up by running away bravely from the dire rats. <laughs> the better part of Valor. Yep. Discretion and all that. Ye, ye, who, lives, ye, ye who runs away lives to fight another day. Yep. So, at this point, uh, there is, well, still some more to explore. Which way does the party want to head? There's a well, curve that you can see this way. And this way, and this way. And you can intuit that you've already been this direction and this direction. Let's go check this stuff out. Okay. Yeah. What around? There? Yeah, yeah. Let me just activate no clip real quick. <laughs> and follow the standard protocol for opening doors. Okay. Don't detect shit. <laughs> <laughs> Try to open the door silently. Okay. Well, the door opens. Um, this small, misappropriately sized room in the description contains a single, ten-foot-long table with five straight-back chairs. One chair is at the head of the table, with the t two chair or with two chairs on either side. A single silver candlestick rests in the center of the table. A weapon rack, a weapon rack, hangs on the northern wall, empty of any weapons. A single silver candlestick. Worth five gold pieces. Take it. Ah, good to know that the, the murder hobo uh, intuition is still there. <laughs> it's shiny. Take it. <laughs> We're pilfering this place. Hole. It's me that I'm murderous. Oh, that, I suppose that's never been expounded upon for you guys. All D&D &D characters are generally murder hobos. They run around murdering things without having a home ever. I'm a noble yep. murder hobo. <laughs> uh, but there's nothing in the room unless you guys want to poke around, see if there's anything you can find. I search. You get a stone sense bonus for this. Oh, sweet. Play one. However, you don't seem to find anything out of out of place. What? <laughs> Oh, you actually you get a bo plus two bonus when you're searching around and work or stone or I work did, stone. I, I, I get this way one. Yeah, so you don't really find anything. Ah, uh, cause sworn I know something out of the ordinary. Oh well, room's clear. Okay. Was well, someone else wants to try? There's no way I could beat a you, one. You, uh, actually, you always can aid. Uh, you have to roll the skill, and if you get ten or higher, you give them a plus two. And each other person can aid. Oh. Yep. Let me your yes. searching aid. Let's see what my search is. Search aid another is wonderful, especially in melee combat. Where it's incredibly silly. Oh, no. 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 I'm, I'm sorry, Sab, no. You, <laughs> you might have det detracted from the effort. <laughs> 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 I'm helping! <laughs> Look at me, I'm helping! <laughs> sure you are, Sam. Sure you are. Well, luckily for you, that is enough. There is a single rock that can be removed from the wall behind the weapons rack. Um, in it contains a folded paper worn in yellow with age. Oh, look, it's another one. Yep. Whole plate's in common. Can I read it? Yes, it is in common. Uh, if... We... <laughs> If we could but flood the lower levels with blessed water, we could get rid of that ancient evil that resides there. She is imbued with nat with unnatural speed and a supernatural strength. To look in her eye, the or to look her in the eyes is a sh is sheer folly, and a mortal man would lose his mind in those eyes. May the gods have mercy on our souls as we venture into her domain to do battle with her. I fear that she will win the day if the other clergymen cannot agree agree on a course of action. That is all the note says. So, in other words, people got fucked over by a bureaucracy. Yep. It's a witch! It's a something. Probably a witch. Well, clearly what we should just do is just, you know, take the time. We, we can take 20 to flood the, uh, the lower levels with holy water, right? 
You do I... not have enough silver left to flood the entire remaining floors with holy water. Well, hold on, <laughs> we got like some. No, I don't have to calculate this. You do not have enough pints to do this. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But what we can do is we could get holy water and hook up, like, Ghostbuster packs. It would take you months to bless that much water. <laughs> it would take years or decades, actually, t to bless enough to, to do that, because you bless in, in the scale of pints. I admire the forward-thinking approach, but this is a terrible idea. <laughs> Clearly, right. please come up with a better solution that scales right up. <laughs> Aside from attempting to flood the rest of the dungeon with, with holy water, do you have something you guys want to do? <laughs> um, let's proceed on with the rest of uh, our business here. The rest of a reasonable like, plan? Holy let's say, like, so what we got left? Like, these two pass here? Yep. Yeah. All right. Eeny, meeny, mine, well, it's a tiger, five then, so. The top one. Yeah, oh, the top one. Go, out, goes, my, oh, you. <laughs> top one is. <laughs> you, you can't really argue with the, the, uh, the decision-making method. Any my emo gods are always right. I noticed a hilarious er, rendering error that is my brain derping horribly at reading maps. And doesn't affect the adventure in any way. Lovely. Yep. So, at this point, the uh, the intersection will bend in two ways. This way, and this way. And you can see that... Mini, mini, oh, I think your party has spoken in going oh. up to the north. <laughs> okay. Fine, be that way. Uh, you will get a stone sense roll. Really? Oh my I god. Mean, I had no sense. idea that there was possibly a sort of hidden thing up here. Yeah, it's not like I, I horribly misrendered something. 20. Uh, that is not enough. Lend me your aid! Now, well, with all of that, that is enough. You have discovered a secret room. <coughs> Ooh. Hold on, that's hilarious. Okay. <clears throat> the person writing this module doesn't understand how map squirrel squares work. You'll notice this is a recurring theme. The secret door swings open on a silent hinge to reveal the dust-covered floor of a 20-foot by 20-foot room. Two glowing balls of pale white light provide dim illumination to this room. The balls rest atop two black wrought iron or iron wrought candelabras that stand six feet tall each. The candelabras stand on either side of a large square coffin. The coffin's lid is carved in a bas-relief of a man in armor, lying on his back with his hands folded across his chest. Under his hands, he holds a mighty sword. This must be the tomb of a very important warrior. Is there so any religious so that's iconography? that's a dead guy, right? Hmm? Huh? That's a dead guy there, right? Um, I believe so. Um, there is no religious iconography. Um, it would be nobility and uh, spellcraft if you want to try and figure out what the candelabras are. Okay. I can do that. So, my little worry right now is that we're going to a mine. That we know from all notes is eventually going to be filled with undead. Or even dead guy here. Mm hmm. That, that does not right. well. I have, I have rebuke undead. That was my uh, spellcraft roll, by the way. These are candelabras uh, that have the light spell permanent seed on the top of them. I am taking one of those because when my torches go out, I am blind. Uh, A six foot wrought iron candelabra. Wait, six foot iron? Okay, hold on. It weighs 40 totally, pounds each. I, t I totally <laughs> misunderstood the scale of this candle up. I uh, know, they're six feet tall and made entirely out of wrought iron. Also, this room is totally 20 feet by 20 feet. You know, it's three by three. Huh? Oh, it is three by three. Whoops. That's again, my, my brain not working right. 
it's well. 15 feet by 15 feet. Deal with it. <laughs> Let's Never say we mind me not now. understanding how big things Wait, are. Wait, uh, so, what, Claire, can you detect undead? I don't trust that uh, tomb there or that dude in armor. I most certainly can detect undead. I'm going to do detect undead. Okay, you detect no undead. Okay, he's not alive. Whew. Let's check out this armor. Okay. Well, I'm assuming it's right, like... Here. Yeah, it's basically there. Search the room. Uh, there does not appear to be anything of note, uh, aside from the coffin. The coffin lid, however, is sealed shut and, uh... Sealed with lead. Wow, they really didn't want people getting into this. Lead's well, easy to burn off, isn't it? You can melt that. It's very low melting temperature. Well, do you guys have a basically a soldering torch? Lead also kind of prevents you from scanning the inside of it. Yeah. If it's properly aligned with it. Oh, so we can't actually detect undead it. Nope. So magic is like radiation. It can't go through lead. Yep. About an inch of lead will stop any magical scrying. Which is how you make yourself immune to scrying. You make a suit of lead armor. However, and then that... immediately become brain damaged. Yep. However, that leads to another hilarious thing where you are <laughs> a walking dead zone that the easiest way to track is to find the area where you can't scry into. The roughly human-sized area that you can't scry into. <laughs> but yes... It does appear to be sealed shut. You might be able to break it open, or if you had some way of producing effectively a uh, a soldering torch style effect, you could uh, desolder it. What uh, heat related spells do you guys know? None. Uh, none. Eight. Candelabra. Uh, the light spell does not produce heat. It is just a. Can they light the candelabra? Um. No, no. the The candelabra is the the top of it is lit with the light spell, which cannot be. Uh, there are no candles in it. Oh. Oh. Why would this guy be in a mine? Some people do it. Dwarves do it. Uh, if there's really like if there was an area that was once like a rich geode, um. They might bury them there, uh, or it's a good place to hide a body if you don't, if people don't want um, the body being found. Well, Bogolf, you've got a crowbar, don't you? Lead's not very, uh, lead's pretty soft. Couldn't you uh, pry your way in? I'll give it a try. <laughs> don't. Um... Collectively, between the lot of you, if you. Aided another and took twenty. You could do it. All right, take twenty with eight. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Let's pry that sucker open. Inside the coffin are the skeletal remains of a warrior wearing a rusted helmet, a, a bastard sword in his hands, and a small chest between his feet. Is the skeleton moving? Nope. Do I detect undead? Nope. I coup de gras him anyways, just in case. Coup de gras does not work on undead. But you can try if you'd like. <laughs> well, what's that? He's got a little, uh, little lockbox, it seems. Yep. Is it locked? Not at all. Swings open. Oh, what's it called a lockbox? Hold it. Stop. We can't do this. Why? You're desecrating the dead. But you're evil. I'm lawful evil, and I'm aligned mostly to the necrotic gods. So, wouldn't you be more aligned to just raising this dead from his grave rather than... Only if he agreed to it. Oh, I didn't realize that... You can't go violating the rights of Sorry, I didn't realize that necromancers actually ask for consent first. Some do. One of the guys that I know that got thrown out of college did. And that's why they got thrown out of college. They also weren't trying to appease a god, so... Yeah, my, the god that I worship, um, disturbing the dead, especially, like, raising the dead against their will, are big no-nos. 
How do you get consent for the dead? Speak with Dev. Yeah. Hold a ritual. That too. Uh, like, during the animate dead, if their spirit does not want to be reanimated, you can't, I can't force them to. Or I could force them, but it would take an alignment check. What yeah. alignment, wh where would your alignment go from evil? From lawful to neutral. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, good point. Yeah, there are two axes that on which an, uh, an alignment can shift. Yeah, I just wasn't thinking about that in the case of uh, obedience to his deity. Good to know. Uh, you have to actually ask for consent. It's illegal to raise the undead against the will. It occurs during the pro the process of casting animate dead, but yeah. I, I just didn't know that. I didn't realize that there was like, such a the, like the equivalent of rape in necromancy. Yep. That's why most cultures frown upon necromancy because <laughs> they they have the view that there isn't like consent or anything like that. Which is why actual. Uh, nations founded on necromancy are slightly less creepy. Interesting. But hey, all right. I guess well, we can't um, disturb the undead. No, 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 no. Look, we've we've killed all these people and looted their bodies. At the very least, we've already ruined this guy's tomb. I say we just pop open the box and look at it. I can't be part of this. Krivar uh, pushes open the end of the pushes open like, the box with the end of his staff. Okay. Oh, there appear to be seven vials in it. Oh, poison! No, no. Well, I mean, you could make actually it's knowledge nature to identify poisons. What about not? Uh, yeah. Can I praise them? Can I have praise to identify? No, oh, you could attempt that. Meh. These are not poisons. One of, one of them is kind of the opposite of a poison. Actually, six <laughs> oh. of them are the opposite of poisons. Um, Collectively, between all of your brains, uh, six of these uh, <laughs> are potions of cure light wound with a fifth are with a caster level of 5, and one is a potion of remove disease. That's handy. Yep. Well. I guess the because... cleric doesn't need to know about this. Nope. Nope. But you can hold on to that, though, just in case. Uh, will you be attempting to remove them? Sure. Wait. Uh, we'll take the box. Not Wait. The Wait. We didn't check this since we opened it, did we? Nope. Same protocol. Took the traps. <laughs> you are incredibly lucky, because I would have about to been able to cackle maniacally as a CR5 encounter occurred, in which five arrow fusillades shoot out at the nearest targets. <laughs> And I basically would have been standing there saying, I told you so. <laughs> uh, you can attempt to disable the device if you would like. <laughs> I would like to attempt to disable the device. I believe that's also a plus six. I just want to double check it. Oops. Uh, yeah, that's plus six. Ah. You have hit the nail on the head. You have managed to disable the device. They will not fire if you were to remove the uh, the chest. All right. Let's remove the chest full of little healing potions. Wait a minute. Can I, like, remove the traps in such a manner that I can set them back up somewhere else later? Not easily, because the fuel slots are built into the wall. Damn it. Okay. I don't know what a dead guy needs with healing potions. <laughs> so that if he ever reanimates as a skeleton, he immediately kills himself. Because <laughs> clearly, if you were poisoned as you die, you, have, you still suffer the poison when you get reanimated. Well. Bogolf, shall we uh, go back out and check the next room? Sure, but 
just just for a note there, since I just saved our ass. If I need some fucking health, I call dibs on a potion. Very well. All right. All right. Wait, 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 wait. I go back here and close the two properly. <laughs> okay. I take the neutral, so I have to do some good things. <clears throat> All right, let's check out this uh, door after I stop no clipping. Now, is the wizard going to try and carry the 40-pound candelabra with him? No. <laughs> okay, just wanted to make sure. So, team, the uh, tech traps. All right. There are no traps on the door. All right. I'm going to try Sam's method. Which is what? Kick in the door? No, it's a, a slash roll. Ah. Silently. I thought maybe you meant Baldo's method, which is rip the door off its hinges. Rip and tear. Uh, I'm rip and tear. That. You're also not playing Munchkin. This 10 foot by 20 foot room is decorated in a macabre fashion. Skulls of humans, elves, dwarves, and gnomes hang from the ceiling by fine steel chains. The gory remnants of two or of a halfling is crucified to the south wall by metal spikes between two small straw mattress beds. The stink of pungent incense and death permeates every inch of the room. Well, this shit got dark out of nowhere. Yes. I, I love what they've done with the place. It's a very nice decoration. I'm particularly fond of the dead halfling. <laughs> I think everyone is. <laughs> no one likes halflings. Not even halflings like halflings. <laughs> They're pretty All right, Wait, let's, let's go search this place, see if there's anything besides bones here. There is not. I don't see shit. I'm fucking blind. Okay. Oh, this is a poor list to start the room. Hmm. So, he didn't find anything in there? Nope. Just a bunch I, of corpses? I corpses and beds. That being said, I did take people on that one, so I'm pretty blind. In fact, I probably don't even see the corpses at this point. I'm probably just like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. This looks like a living room. Can I take a round to just, like, inspect the corpses? Yeah, if you want to. See, like, what they're, like, what killed them. Yeah. Is there any sort of, like, religious purpose to all of this? Goblins being goblins? This is darker than goblins. I don't think I've ever seen goblins hanging dead bodies from the rafters. Specifically, crucifixion seems a little bit beyond goblins. Yeah. Well, these are where rat or lycanthrope goblins. They may have, you know, become more insane with the lycanthropy process. But do I, do I see anything out of place, or do I have to roll, or is it just corpses? Mm, there doesn't seem to be anything really out of place. Okay. I mean, you know, aside from the bodies being there, nothing's truly out of place. I leave there slightly bodies? disturbed. Is there anything on the bodies? Nope. The only real, like, substantial body is the one that was crucified. Otherwise, it's skulls hanging from steel chains. I, uh... I want to check the, the crucified halfling for any identification. There does not appear to be any. Why would you check the halfling for identification? Because it was treated differently than the rest of them. I mean, it could be Jesus. If he has a tattoo on his back that leads to land. You know, leader of an opposing cult or any number of other things it could have been. Nope. Uh, there is not some sort of marking. Probably some unfortunate sap who was working on the silver caravan. Makes sense. Oh, this is cute. Onwards. We got one door left. Yep. All right, stair protocol. Okay. Door. Clip through the wall. Clip through the wall. 
There's a lot of wall clipping. I have been focused on the wrong area for a little bit. I do a perfect search for traps. Okay. No traps. That's a waste. I try to op silently open the door. Silently open the door. In the room, there appears to be uh, uh, two bunks. Uh, one here, one here. Uh, bunk beds, two bunk, uh, one on top of the other. Uh, and with a small chest at the foot of each of them. Rusted there hinges, no locking mechanism that you can see. Is there anything in the beds? Nope. Completely empty. Can't that for a second. Uh, I mean, tossed, you know, tossed sheets and all that. It looks like someone has been, or slept in them at, at some point, but otherwise nothing really. Still don't believe you. Hmm? You can uh, attempt to search if you'd like. I will search. And I'll probably go blind from the search. Damn it. Um... You find a small purse of coins. Uh, ten, yeah. Ten gold pieces to be exact. That's so good. Ten gold. Okay. Well, that's another room successfully pillaged. Wait, we didn't check the chest yet. Oh, yeah. You can open the chest if you'd like. Check the Standard traps. Standard protocol, Eric. Yep. No traps. All right, open it. Absolutely nothing. Oh, lovely. Let's go. Yep. If at once there had been anything in it, there probably isn't, because whoever had these chests has whatever they're carrying with them. Oh, I guess we go this way now. Hmm. Okay. Continuing along. Gonna have to go a long way down this hallway. Yeah. Yep. Do, 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 do. All right. Checking the door. As per normal. Yep. Just a second. Okay. Okay. Uh, you do not find any traps. Silently so open the door. I'm very loud. Well, not very loud, but not quiet either. Okay. This 25 foot by 30, or 15 foot room has been draped with multicolored, <laughs> moth-eaten scarves and bolts of moldy fabric in an attempt to make it appear regal. A large, high-backed wooden chair sits against the middle of the west wall. A large, hairy goblin sits in the chair, wearing a black studded leather and flanked by two goblins on either side that carry short spears. They look at you and smile at your intrusion. You've been slaying our tribe. I can smell their blood on you, says the seated goblin. Before we end your lives, I would know the names of the heads that will be mounting all my chamber walls. I'm too tired to tell you my name. We are, in order, fuck you, stinking goblin. Well then, it's time to show you why Lawrence put me in charge. Uh, you are, are you guys sure we don't have anything that catches anything on fire? Because there's a lot of tapestry here, and stuff like that. You can totally just light the room on fire, and then just close the door. What sorcery is this, wizard? Why are you going first? <laughs> <laughs> well. I, uh, step into the room. Ah, the, the dreaded no-clip. Say, so you better, uh, you fools better back me up. And blast off a color spray. Ah. It's will saves from everybody. Yep. One of them made it. Yep, the big the one makes one, it. The, the one that kind of needed to fail it the most. <laughs> you can try and force it to fail. Or force it to re-roll. 
does everybody uh, does anybody have any thoughts about that? At this point, like we have three rerolls as a group, and how much longer do we have? You've probably got a few more, or maybe at least one or two more floors. I mean, not like that. I mean, like for this session for today. Oh, um, you've got. Basically, I guess he's asking when do they recycle? Uh, they will recycle at the end of the module. Uh, once the whole thing's been cleared and all that. Okay, we have a while to go yet, then. Don't worry about oh. it. Okay. Okay. Well, uh... Begoloff. The good news is that you can sneak attack any of them this round. Oh, and his DR value is wrong. What is... What is your AC not in that form? Ow. Oh. See, I would love to sneak attack him, but uh, that AC makes me worry. Well, you can always try. He is actually denied a fair amount of that right now. Okay, I will then go straight up to him in a way that doesn't provoke attack of opportunity. Uh, they have not acted yet, so they cannot make attacks of opportunity. And I'm not blessed anymore, right? No. You will hit. Roll to confirm. Wait, oh, wait. Oh, that was a crit. Fuck. Potentially a crit, yes. That will confirm. You may do your uh, your damage. Uh, it would be... It's times two. Yep. Does that include the sneak attack or no? No, sneak attack does not get multiplied. Not until epic level. So it's 1d6 plus 1 times 2 plus another 1d6. Yep. Does that all go between one thing of brackets? Um, I think so. I'm not certain. I think it does order of operations, so... You know what, screw it. I'm just going to do the crit first and then add the same attack. Which is not for very much. Um, Wait, it's actually no. higher than that. Yeah, it's eight points. It's eight points, and then your sneak attack. And that's yeah, incredible. Like, so that's three plus one. So before you roll, yeah. you would. And when you roll two d six, not multiply. Uh, you. The the funny thing is, is that the the player's handbook and the DMG both agree that it can be done either way. You can use the oh. multiplier or roll multiple dice. Interesting. Okay. All right, so 8 plus 6, so 14. Well, the good news is is that's not the right instance of map tools. The <laughs> other good news is that you managed to drive your rapier straight through his brain before he <laughs> oh. even gets a chance to do anything. You have slain Res Zomar. The... Wait, 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 wait. I want to try something. Can I take this opportunity to make an Intimidate check to make the other goblins shit their pants? They're unconscious. Yeah. Oh, never mind. Well, this will be easy. Yep. You don't get a chance. <laughs> Pripyat. Oh. Well, that was a perfect opportunity for a crit to happen. Well, these, uh... are unconscious, aren't they? Yep. You can coup de gras them. With pleasure. I just roll for damage for that, right? Yep, it's an automatic critical. So 2d8 plus 3? Uh, your strength modifier is multiplied and your enhancement bonus is multiplied, so 2d8 plus 4. Wow. You have still killed it. You have killed it dead. And I will save you all all the effort. You have killed them. You have killed all of them, you monsters. We are the best slide. we are the best humanoids ever. Yep. Genocide is the only way. <laughs> okay. Let's yep. remove the taint from this mine. Oh wait, Ron Ron RPG, my bad. Well, let's loot the bodies. Well no, let's let's search the bodies. That's same as loading the bodies. Uh, on the body of the chief, he has his studded leather armor, which does appear to be somewhat special in some way. 
a Masterwork Small Steel Shield, Masterwork Hand Axe, a, pair, or a key, and he has some coin on him. Wait, wait, all right, so to be fair, earlier I thought Sam said to leave the bodies. Okay, no, he said loot. That? Leave the bodies? Where are we being? Are we being respectful for the freshly dead? <laughs> no, we killed these people honorably. <laughs> uh, on his body there are four copper and six gold. Does and anybody it... want that small masterwork shield? No, I can't use shields. All can yours? I have? Actually, wait, okay. what does it mean if, like, can I just not use a shield at all if I'm not... If you take able? horrible penalties if you try and use it when you're not proficient. Okay. Uh, what does masterwork apply to a small steel shield? It reduces the penalties. Do I even have penalties? Because I'm proficient. Uh, well, it has, like, a, uh, an armor check armor penalty. check penalty, which becomes, like, zero... Probably. Yeah. You'll uh, want to look up the relevant section in the D20 SRD, Dan. Alright, let me have a look to see here then. Because right now I'm using like a small wooden shield that I got off some little dorky. Whatchamacallit there. So I'd probably be better. Oh, but, um, <laughs> so about that, that special looking leather armor you were talking about. Well, someone can attempt to try and figure out what it is. I'll roll a priest check to try to ID it. Is it a light shield or you said light steel shield? I don't know shit. So it's the same armor as Okay, it's the same armor as my um but it is incredibly hard to sunder. Um it yeah. looks like it could be magical maybe. Ow. Well, I'll uh I'll zap it with a detect magic. It is a plus one studded leather thingamabobber. Can I have that? Because I have studded leather right now. Uh, it is sized for a small creature, however. Damn it. You can resize it. It will cost a small amount, but you could always wait until after the adventure and maybe see if you can buy something with your spoils. That's true. Okay, let's just, I'll, let's just bring it with us for just general loot. Yep. Okay. Okay, my, uh, it does reduce the armor penalty by one, which makes it zero. Yep. So okay. So I just have a really awesome light steel shield. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's still a little bit left that you haven't, uh, accessed. So clearly we're going to go backtrack all the way around to where this fork was, like way back over here. Here. Yep. Then go around this fork. And then once you find that room over there where you've removed so your character. we're going to be going like... So basically we're no clip into here. Do. 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 It's only 300 feet. Yeah. Alright, Sarah Protocol. No, oh, give me a second. Um, <clears throat> I don't see shit. I will have... I will note that while you are looting and searching around, there is a small grate here that appears to go down. Oh. Oh. Appears to be locked at the moment, but it will uh, it well, will take you, you down. Key off that body? We yes, find a key. key off that body. But that uh, I, I'm assuming you guys are going to attempt it or to try that one. Well, we're let's finish well with those it. others. Yeah, let's finish the floor. Yeah. Let's... Okay. Because because I mean we got we got told by the notes that you know downstairs is more dangerous. So let's just clear out this area first. Gather as much experience as possible. Yeah. Okay. I love grinding in D&D. &D. Uh, yeah, so I rolled a 10 to try to find traps. I clearly fail. Yep, nothing. I'm going to try to open the door silently. Okay. I'm a little better at that. 
This 15-foot by 10-foot room is draped with black and red silk scarves of intricate design. Many of these scarves sway and move as if pushed by an unseen and unfelt breeze. The center of the northern wall is kept free of these scarves and has a large statue of a half-rat, half-man abomination. The statue appears to be made of green marble and has two red, or two red glowing rubies of fries. The rest of the altar is decorated by numerous skulls, scrolls, scraps of food, and solidified candle wax pools. This doesn't look ominous at all. Nope. How long did it take us to get back over here? Um, how far did you say it was? 300 feet? Yeah. Uh, five rounds. Okay, so then I've still got Detect Magic up, yep. which I'll refocus in this room. Okay, uh, there does not appear to be any magic. Okay. I, I want to do a praise. What was, in the, what was in the room again? Uh, well, I'll praise a that whole... statue because it's gems, which are kind of stone, I guess. Yeah, uh, a whole bunch of silk scarves and a statue. Uh. Oh, I don't know shit about that statue. No, the statue's... Yep. You Describe not... again what the what the statue was. Uh, let's see. Uh, has a large statue of a half rat, half man abomination. The statue appears to be made of green marble, and has two red glowing rubies for eyes. That sounds valuable. Okay. Is this um? I mean, other than being, it's pretty ev- evident that what you know what a rare were rat is. But does this seem to be like of some sort of were rat? religious champion or um you can attempt a religion check Ooh, I think I have that how similar does it seem to that statue of the, the first statue um pretty similar I'm assuming that 27 is your religion check yes this is Naramunath lord of disease the rat god clearly ah. not Nurgle Well, we'll uh, certainly want to be careful here. It seems that they've turned this place into some sort of temple to a disease god. Just be glad it's not Nurgle. There'd be Nurglings here, and no one wants that. What's a Nurgle? <laughs> it's a it's a god from Warhammer and Warhammer 40k. It's uh, not a pleasant god. He's the Santa Claus of disease. Yep. Oh. <laughs> That's exactly what he is. <laughs> the Santa Claus of disease. He loves everybody, but he, the gifts that he gives suck. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. Uh, unless anyone else is going to attempt another uh, appraise check. Yeah, I won't pry out those ruby eyes, but I'm worried... Now that we know that. I'm just going to leave it that's a That's an appraise check, by the way. Okay, the statue, as as it is, is worth 650 gold pieces. The problem with it is, is it's 300 pounds. I'm going to attempt <laughs> to check the uh, statue for traps, especially okay. around the eyes. No traps. Uh, you can, in fact, pry out the eyes if you would like to. Uh, they'd be worth about a hundred gold pieces or gold at each. So, in other words, it's a third of the value, a fraction of the weight is just the eyes. Yep. Yeah, well, I'll just take that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's an easy cost-benefit analysis there. Yep. Okay. No, oh, there is one room left. And I'm assuming standard operating procedure? Standard operating procedure. We'll just move to, let's move to it. Also, I'll post a little comic for you in the chat. Hmm. Alright. Well, give me a search check. No, oh, no, 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 no! Okay, okay. All right. All right, check the traps. Wait, five. Nope, nothing. 
can open the door silently. Okay. In first glance, this 10 foot by 20 foot room appears to be a large bedchamber of an ancient noble line. It's not until your eyes adjust to the strange blue light of the black candles lit around the room do you realize that this is just a collection of odd trophies from numerous noble families. A large four-posted bed dominates the southern portion of the room, complete with a heavy oak dresser in the southeast corner. An old oval rug covers the center of the floor, and the small table and chair rest against the middle of the west wall. Broken shields and faded paintings decorate the walls of this room. The largest shield is, ab is above the head of the bed, with a black falcon holding a pick and shovel in its talons. Black candles? Yes. Um, that was pretty rare. Yeah, probably. Um, you could attempt Knowledge Arcana. Because that skill that you're supposed to use doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> Which skill was that? Alchemy. I actually have that, and it oh, still yeah. does exist in three. Well, five. it's craft alchemy, but like this is in reference to what I'm going to assume would become Arcana or craft alchemy, if you'd like. What was the uh, the original skill? Was just alchemy. Yeah, just alchemy. Oh, that's right. That did exist in three O. Yep. Okay. Well, there's an Arcana roll. Okay. These candles are commonly used in religious and arcane ceremonies amongst the elf to reproduce an ethereal effect. They're not worth much, about a copper apiece, but uh, there are there's a small chest that uh, would more than likely contain several of those. So we're in the order of 20. These could be very handy. Candles? Yep. Candles. By, by an ethereal effect. Um, oh, so you actually like, hit ghosts and stuff? Yeah, uh, I want to say that it's useful for stuff like Ethereal Jaunt as like a spell focus or a spell component. I don't remember for certain, though. Crew versus, well, if you don't mind, these might be useful in my spellcraft. All right, go right ahead, sir. I'm actually so going to weird... take one, like one or two of those candles, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Kruvar gives you half of them. Candles for everyone. Okay. Well, other than that, I will sum everything up and help everyone out by saying that this is the end of this floor. There is the Great Downwards, but that will be another issue for next episode. So I'm going to stop this episode here, and we'll talk to you guys next time.